everybody. Thanks for joining me this evening. I know it's late, so I appreciate you taking the time to tune into this webinar that is about podcasts. And I enjoy podcasting very much, so it's going to be my pleasure to share what I've learned about podcasting with you. All right. Promote your business with podcasts. Presented by myself, Dana Crawford. So a few minutes about me. My eBay ID is Dana, D-A-N-N-A, and I've been an eBay seller since 1997. And you can learn more about me. Just Google my name, Dana Crawford, and you can learn more. But most of all, I've taken a position with WorthPoint, and I became their strategic director in 2017. And so I just celebrated my four-year anniversary with WorthPoint. And recently, I wanted to start a podcast with my friend, Wayne Jordan, who is a retired auctioneer. And we decided to do this together, and it's called Flip It or Skip It. And it's been a wonderful journey with this podcast. We just celebrated our 10,000 downloads. Woohoo! So it's exciting when you get a podcast going and you start seeing people download and listen and you start getting fans and it keeps you going. So that's the goal of getting your podcast going is finding listeners. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. I also have a website called powersellingmom.com, which is under construction right now. So you can stop by and take a look around and read about myself and some tips for selling. Meanwhile, let's get started. Our agenda, we're going to talk about content creating, branding, equipment to use, platforms, different platforms, voice versus video, because you can experiment with both, which we're going to venture into shortly. Sponsors, WorthPoint is the sponsor of our podcast, and also about adding commercials to your podcast. I'll share our tips, my tips that I've learned with Wayne, graphics and logos, and I'll finalize with a few final words, and then we will have questions and a drawing. So let's dig in. Why podcast? So you're here today, obviously, because you want to learn about podcasting or you're thinking about jumping in and experimenting to become a podcaster. So why do we podcast? We want to build authority. You're already an expert in your industry. So why not share more information about that? You also maybe you want to do a podcast to motivate and inspire folks. It could be um, a yoga or a motivational type podcast. Whatever it is, you definitely want to inspire, no matter what kind of uh, podcast direction you go with. But it is all about motivating people. Valuable content. You want to provide valuable content. It's not all about me, 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 buy my product. It's about providing valuable content that is going to educate. And you should be passionate. If you're going to share a subject, you want to share a subject that you're passionate about. Just don't pick any, any old subject. You want to have a subject that is of interest to you. Also, you can use it to brand yourself. It's part of the branding process for your company or your business. And it also helps with marketing. Podcast is a part of the marketing journey. It gives you another avenue of marketing your business. You can also have an affiliate. So say you there's an affiliate program that you belong to at a brand that complements your business. You can promote those affiliate links and during your podcast and have affiliate promotions. Maybe you have an affiliate code that you would get credit for and earn money from. You can also become an influencer. There's a lot of influencers out there. It's like a buzzword nowadays. And 
influencers do very well. I've done well as an influencer on different topics. So if you become an authority in your field that you're passionate about, it's very likely that you could be tagged as an influencer and asked to do some speaking or some uh, marketing with their product. So now we need an audience. We can start with our customers. If you have a business, you can start with the customers in your business. Encourage them to tune into your podcast. You can also turn to your friends and family. I mean, that's where we all kind of start. I first thing I did was reach out to my mother and said, please listen to my podcast. So you can start with your friends, your family, and your relatives. Also, you can share it on social media and you can find audience that way. But if you have no audience at all and you say, I don't want to reach out to my family and friends, I don't have any customers, or if you don't have a database of customers, or if you just are not comfortable marketing on social media, well, there are other avenues. So here is the results of a survey that was taken from this company, thepodcasthost.com. And they took a survey with 780 people. I thought it was very interesting. 41% of them have never run a podcast. 41, so you're not alone. 40% prefer to search their listening apps directory to discover new podcasts. Podcasts are judged mostly on the description and then their episode titles. How about that? People don't care if they've never heard of the podcaster. You don't have to be famous or their guests. 28.9% of listeners will give a show up to 15 minutes to hook them. 27.5% on the other hand will only give it five minutes. So keep that in mind. The vast majority of listeners are fine with ads and podcasts within reason. Going too long can lose more listeners than going too short. There was no difference in the data from the 41% who have never podcasted before to the 59% who have. So I thought this was a great survey for me to share with you and a special thanks and shout out to the podcasthost.com for providing this information to the public. Now you need a podcast show name. There's options here. You can use your real name. You can use your business name. You want it to be a little bit clever and catchy, maybe. You also want to check for duplicates before you jump in to create, to give it a name, to pick your name. And also your name could match your niche. Mine is called Flip It or Skip It, and it matches, it complements that I'm an um, eBay reseller, a thrifter, a treasure hunter. So it is a good fit. Also, it could be a descriptive name that will describe what you're, what you're into, like yoga or exercise or motivation. But you want to keep it short and sweet. A name that's too long can get cut off in the archives or it can get cut off when the different podcast players are showing it or presenting it. You don't want that to happen. Now, when you have your podcast, you try to decide how long should it go? Well, the main thing is, how long is it going to take you to get to the point? You want to get your point across. You want to have a clear message that's easy to understand. So how much time do you need to get that point across? 15 minutes is short. 30 minutes is okay. We try to keep ours at about 20 minutes. Sometimes we go about 35, 40 minutes, but not very often. We try to keep them um, on the average of 20 minutes to 30 minutes. But how long do you need? 
we actually need that amount of time. And sometimes when we've gone overboard and we've talked too much because we had so much information about concert posters or by collectible posters, we decided to cut it up into part one and part two. So that is another option. But 20 minutes is really a good set time to keep people listening and tuning in. Also, how often should you release your podcast? Now, some people like myself are weekly. Every Wednesday, we have a new podcast that is released. Some people choose weekly or monthly, once a month. Every month, the first of the month, they have a new podcast that comes out. How often is it going to be for you to be able to dedicate yourself? It could be every other week. It could be, um, you know, quarterly. The main thing is that you're consistent, which whatever direction you go, because you don't want to leave people hanging. They may not come back if they listen to that first podcast and they like you. And if you said on there that you're going to be um, downloading a podcast, you're going to be recording a podcast every week, and then you don't follow up, then people are not going to trust you. So you want to make sure that you are consistent with whatever you are, however you are presenting it from the beginning. What kind of episode titles? Now you have your title. It's flip it or skip it for me. Now we got to come up with episode titles. You want those titles to be searchable. Easy. Keywords. Keywords are important. What kind of words are people going to be looking for? How to. Do it yourself. Helpful. Motivational. What kind of keywords? How to works really well. Also top tips. You could call your episode the top tips for thrift store shopping or the top tips for selling on eBay. Whatever your niche is, whatever your broadcast is about, top tips is very helpful and is searchable. And again, avoid those long titles, as I mentioned before, because they're not practical and they're not, they don't do you justice. Co-host or solo. Now, when I first started podcasting, before it was called podcasting, it was called online radio. (laughs) So we did online radio shows back in the day, and I had Power Selling Mom Radio. And I actually was by myself, and I would talk about eBay and talk about different things. Also, sometimes I would have a guest. But when you talk went solo, I'm talking you're talking to an audience. So you need to get your point across. And if you go solo, it's fine. You can do solo. I did very well with mine. Co-host lets you be conversational. So Wayne and I can banter back and forth. We may not always agree. We can laugh together and we take turns speaking and we never speak over each other. And it's conversational. You can also do interview shows. When I had Power Selling Mom Radio, I actually did have guests on. I had eBay, eBay celebrities. I had um, eBay employees, and that was a lot of fun. So having an interview show is also another avenue that you may want to go. Also, audio or video or both. Now, Most of our podcast, well, all of our podcasts are audio only, which is podcasting. So they're audio. Now we're actually going to start doing some teasers on video. So those we're going to be launching probably in the next few months. And what the plan with that is, this was a new idea that I had where we're going to start a YouTube channel with flip it or skip it. And then we're going to do... We're going to start with episode number one of the podcast, and then we're going to talk about what we talked about on the podcast just for 10 minutes. And then um, in 
encourage people to go listen to the, the real podcast and include links to it. So we'll see how that works. So check back, feel free to email me and see how that works or do a Google search for flip it or skip it on YouTube and see if you can't find how we're doing and subscribe. Now there's different ways for you to do your podcast. There's lots of tools. Um, here are the most common, which is a computer. You can do um, you can do podcasts right directly from your computer. Wayne and I actually do from our computers. You can also use a smartphone, which a lot of podcasters are doing, especially the the young folks. <laughs> they use their their phones for everything. And also the smart pad, you could, you could create your podcast directly from a smart pad. So it's up to you. You can also um, make a decision on what kind of a device you're going to use. Now I wanted to share, I am speaking to you right directly from my blue Yeti that's sitting on the desk here. And that's my favorite tool. And Wayne also uses the blue Yeti. And you can do a Google search and try to find a good deal on a Blue Yeti. But there's a picture of the exact ones that we have, and you're welcome to um, explore. There's also all types of microphones that you can check out. Some people use um, the microphones from their phone, which if you have um, a smartphone, it probably has a very good microphone. They also are, there's attachments you can add to your phone or to your smart pad and then clip on a little microphone on your shirt. And those are very powerful as well. So you could kind of look at different ways. How much money do you want to invest or do you want the best? Sorry, I just hit the draw button. I don't know why. Recording and editing software. So yes, you will need some software to do your recording and your editing. So there is editing involved. Now here are a few. There's Restream. There is Audacity and Adobe Audition. I thought I'd share a few with you that you can use. Now, I know some people that just use their Windows program right directly from their desktop or their laptop, and that works wonderfully. You can also use the recording tools right directly from your smartphone, which will record for you that way. Also, you can check out which ones are free and which ones have paid features. Now, most all of them have a free section that if you want to add more, then it's a paid feature. So you can explore and test out different um, software that's out there. So I suggest you just try to look around Google it, test out some of the tools that are available, do some recording, and then see what kind of um, offers they have for free or paid versions. You can also outsource. There's a lot of people that actually will record and then they will send it to someone else to do the editing. So that's an option as well. Now, I wanted to share with you what. Wayne Jordan, my co-host does. He has these tools that he is very happy with. So we can recommend. The first one is called Squadcast. And that is the tool that we use to, to record our podcast. And here's what Wayne had to say. They record each participant at their source rather than having the recording made at a single source. The sound is clearer and it's much easier to edit and balance the separate tracks than try to accommodate multiple sources of noise and volume levels. So what he basically means is when it's recording, it has his voice and my voice in two separate tracks. So 
of course, when I talk and then and then he talks and it allows him to go in and edit each track versus having all of it on one track. So that he felt is a is a huge plus. The next for editing, he uses a site called Audacity. And this is what he had to say. It's free, it's easy to use, and has been around long enough that there is lots of support for the product. He was able to get a lot of support. He was able to read a lot of information on YouTube and get a lot of information on how to use Audacity. So he, and it's free. So it turned out to be his favorite tool for editing. And that's why we recommend it. And finally, you'll need to publish. And we'll go into that in a minute, but I wanted to share with Wayne's recommendation and it's called Resonate. Number one, they have a lot of experience producing podcasts. Number two, they assigned a staff member to help me through the process of setting up a new podcast. So they basically held Wayne's hand and walked him through the process. And they offered the services I would need from production to distribution at a reasonable price. So he was really happy with the service that they had at a reasonable price, which brings us back to the advantage of having a sponsor. WorthPoint, of course, is the sponsor of our podcast. So we were able to have WorthPoint pay for the service that Resonate offers. This is an opportunity for you to also take advantage of. If you find, start approaching sponsors, ask them to sponsor your podcast. And this is the amount that you need for sponsorship. You'll include a commercial and so on. So win-win. And here are some places that you can host your podcast on. And by hosting, now you've, you've created your podcast, you've got it recorded, you've got it edited, and now you need to store it somewhere. It's kind of like a website. You have to store it, have storage for your podcast. So here are a few. There's called Buzzsprout, Captivate, Transistor, and of course, YouTube. I just wanted to name a few. We actually store ours at Resonate, which is an option as well. Not only did they help you um, through the process of editing your podcast, but you also store it there and they monitor, which is a huge bonus. Here's our a few podcast players. We have iHeartRadio, Radio MD, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Audible. The more sites that your podcast is found on, the more you will get downloads, the more you will get subscribers, the more you'll get listeners, and so on. So you want to try to be have your, your um, podcast offered on as many players as possible. Back to Resonate, they actually send these, um, send your podcast out to all of these players for you. So it's another added perk. The other thing is, this is a, a, or, um, a status from Resonate. And I wanted to share this with you because when, as you're choosing a podcast hosting company, you want to make sure that they offer something like this so that you can keep track of the statistics. You can keep track of the downloads. We're very proud that our podcast just hit 10,000 downloads. And we actually knew that because of the status that Resonate shows. Now here, this showed just, a, um, I think it was a few days of recording or downloads. And still today, our number one um podcast is called Vintage VHS Tapes. <laughs> Go figure. And Cast Iron Cookware is actually number two. Flipping Books, number three. And Concert Apparel, which is our very first podcast, 
still weighs in at number four of popularity. So we have just finished our 40th podcast recording. So we have 40 episodes, but it's really nice that we can go in here and take a look at what's happening and stay on top of it and then say, oh, that topic wasn't too popular. Let's stay away from topics in that area or that category. And so it just lets you um, understand what the listeners like. Also, it lets you show you can search by the month, the year, the time of day, and you can learn. You can learn what, what to do more of, what to do less of, and so on. Very helpful. You want to be seen and you want to be remembered. And that's what it's all about in your podcast marketing journey. So some people have a music intro and a music outro, and we do in Flip It or Skip It, but you can decide if that will complement what your topic is. Now, you want to pay attention as you're um, looking for music that it doesn't have copyright laws um, associated with it. So pay attention to what kind of music you use, because I'd hate to see you use, you know, Stairway to Heaven or something, and then you've got it on, you know, that music throughout your whole podcast journey. And then a year later, you have to pull them all because of copyright issues. So you don't want that to happen. Now, I like to use Fiverr.com, and I actually use them a lot for finding um, intros and outros and um, creating those, especially on my webinars. You'll see when you watch my webinar replay, I have an intro and an outro on my webinar replay that I bought at Fiverr. Flip it or skip it, tune in, listen to how Wayne and I have it set up with the intro, the outro, and then that commercial that runs once in the middle to promote WorthPoint. Cover art. Now, this was really fun for me to research. And what, what I did, first of all, you want to see, you want to, you must know that your cover art is the first impression of your podcast. It's the first thing that people are going to see when they're going to the podcast player to search for what to listen to. So, the cover art is super important because, again, it's that first impression. Now, what I learned as uh, Wayne and I were setting ours up, I learned that faces <laughs> were actually getting more attention than just um, some fancy artwork. So I decided uh, when I approached Wayne and I said, you know, um, it looks like people that have their faces on there are, are more popular than the people that don't. So we decided to go with our faces for artwork and it actually works well. So again, depending on your niche and your category, you want to study in that category, what are the most popular, what's trendy so that you can see what kind of cover art did they use. Also, what kind of words do they have in their cover art? Too many words is not good. It can clutter up the cover art. What kind of colors? Colors are interesting. Now that mindset mentor, that stands out with that handsome man's face. And it stands out really nice. And it may will make you want to dial in. And it's easy to understand what it is. Science versus what? I don't know what that is, but it's interesting. So these are the kind of things you want to keep in mind. Keep researching, look at the different categories that match and complement you and your um, podcast categories. And then also take a look at the most popular. What's the most popular in the fashion category, if that's your area, and then go look at what's the most popular, what's trending at the top, and then what kind of cover art did they have that helped make them popular? Because uh, you want to learn from them. These are the measurements for your cover art. So 
They recommend 1400 by 1400 pixels. The reason um, you want to make sure once you once you create your cover art, double check that it's readable at 200 pixels. So turn it into a little thumbnail so that you can make sure because that little thumbnail is what's going to show up on those little podcast iPhones and different players, smartphones. And you want to make sure that yours is easily readable and uh, avoid clutter. You can save it as a JPEG or a ping. It just um, whichever preference or works best for you. I use canva.com and Canva is free. They have a free version and a paid version. And on the free version, you it would be enough. You can just go there and create an account and create custom 1400 by 1400 and then start making some designs and you can create your own. You don't have to outsource that or pay big money to get that done. Also, show notes and players. Now your media hosting, whoever is holding it, um, some of them like Resonate does have show notes available. And what show notes do is they are a breakdown of your podcast. It doesn't, it's not the transcripts. It's just little, it'll say at two minutes and five seconds, Dana talked about whatever. And then it just has the breakdown of the time. Resonate actually includes that. We also include those show notes on a page over at WorthPoint. So WorthPoint also gives us um, a website at their location. So if you type in flipitorskipit.com, it'll actually take you to a page that WorthPoint lets us use. And then we put our podcasts on there so that people can play them. So if you go there, you can click on any of the episodes and then it'll take you to the show notes and to the podcast player. There's also free websites out there that you can put, that you can set up just like we have set up over at flipitorskipit.com. Podpage.com is another place that will let you set up your podcast and your show notes and include the player so that people could click on it directly. I wanted to share one of my affiliates is called grabadomainname.com. So if you type that in, that'll take you to purchase a domain name very cheaply. And um, it is my affiliate link. And then you can um, start putting in whatever your name you're thinking about. When you did your research, as we mentioned earlier, when you were trying to decide a name for your podcast, you want to also check the domain to make sure that you can purchase the name of your podcast. Is there nothing, nothing more frustrating than than creating a, you know, a brand, but you forgot to go look to see if the .com was available. So go to grabadomainname.com, type in whatever it is you're looking for, and you can purchase that domain really cheap, and then purchase it, sit on it and then start working on building your podcast. And again, you can take a look at flipitorskipit.com and take a look at how we set up our show notes. Okay, final tips, noise profile. What the heck is that? <laughs> well, Wayne taught me about this and what a no, no, bleh, noise profile is when you Log in and you're going to start your podcast. You sit there and have silence for like 10, 15 seconds, because then that sets the audio off. I mean, it sets the, sets it for you to do your editing later and it creates um, a noise profile. So it's very helpful according to Wayne. Also, Mute as needed. There's nothing worse than having a cough, <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> clear your throat or those kind of things happening in your podcast. They happen to Wayne and I a lot. We, we record at nine in the morning on Wednesdays. And so we'll, you know, stop for our coffee, but you do, um, we always hit the mute button before we clear our throat. I think he caught me once. And <laughs> Also, you want to be in a quiet room. You want to have a quiet area. And one thing I learned when I was being interviewed by eBay one time, and they actually use Skype. Well, they used to. They don't use it anymore. But they used to use Skype for their podcast recording. And one of the things they said to do is have some pillows and blankets. And I thought, what is that? Why are they telling me to have pillows and blankets? But then I found out it was to help create your own little sound studio. So if you had some extra noise over here or over there, you know, somebody mowing, I guess, or whatever, and you could put some pillows and it's a cheap way to create a sound studio and sit still. I know I tend to move my chair around and then I'm, I'm moving my, I'm clicking my keyboard and, you know, doing things and fidgeting. So you, you want to try to sit still because believe it or not, when you're moving around, it not only changes the direction of your voice during the podcast and it moves away from the mic or whatever, people don't realize that it's affecting the recording. Stay hydrated. The more water that you drink, the clearer your throat will be. And I always try to gargle a little bit, even to help clear the frogs, the morning frogs out of my throat. So staying hydrated really is important. And also you need good bandwidth. Sometimes I travel a lot and I'll need to do a podcast while we're on the road. So I will upgrade if I'm at a hotel, I'll upgrade to a, a higher bandwidth just to help things. Also check your bandwidth at home. You can do a speedtest.com on your computer to see exactly how fast your bandwidth is because you want a good strong uh, bandwidth when you're recording because there's nothing worse than those gurgling sounds or um, you know that old-fashioned dial-up noise <laughs> and also just you know check your content on on what you're going to talk about you could have a little outline and set that up ahead of time for your content so that you have a little bit of an idea. But I'll be honest with you, sometimes we're logging in and, and I don't have anything planned, but it all comes to me. And um, it's because we're the authority. I'm, I'm the expert in the field and, and I have a lot of knowledge in my brain and you all have knowledges in your brain too. So you have a lot of knowledge to share. So sometimes um, having an outline is very helpful, but other times it all just comes naturally. And the main thing is for you is to have fun. You got to have fun. Because if you're not having fun, it's not worth it. <laughs> Wayne and I have a blast doing flip it or skip it. So I just want to encourage you today as you're trying to make the decision to go the podcast direction or not, that it is a lot of fun. And it's, it's a little bit of a learning curve on different things, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So thank you very much for joining me today. I will be available for questions, or you can email me at Dana at flipitorskipit.com and send me your questions. I'm happy to lend a hand if I can. You also reach out on Instagram on Flip It or Skip It podcast on Instagram and on Facebook. You can find us both, both of those. And of course, Worth Point as well. So thank you, Worth Point, for sponsoring everything. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. So if you have questions, you can just type it in. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best with your podcasting journey. Bye.